what's going on breeders uh just this video is going to be an update on the biocube and our sump setup in the last setup you saw that we set up our biocube with the sump we built it put it all together so now it's been a few weeks of it running as you can see we've got our cheddar ball just constantly on the roll that'll help kind of you know get all sides of light for the ball we're also kind of on purpose letting this get really dingy with algae uh, basically since i don't have any sand or mud or live rock in there we just want to let it get full of algae that way it can help with phosphates the skimmer was pretty easy to set up as you can see it's pulling a lot of nasty gunk it only took about a day to kind of adjust i ended up having to lift it more than the recommended height uh, recommend the height is between 8 to 10 inches which this water line is 10 inches so uh, I'm guessing by the area the small area that it's in it required me to lift a little bit higher which again was planned for anyways when building and planning everything um, in the back in the first chamber I decided to go with k1 media as you can see them they kind of look like uh, little white things in the back um, the K1 is really good for sump moving bed filters. It's easy to make kind of like a reactor out of everyday items such as like a two liter bottle or sponges and a couple of pumps. Um, I've seen a lot of success in tanks with the K1 media versus the bio balls. Basically there's more surface area for the bacteria to colonize and grow. Personally I feel like the bio balls get very dirty and full of sludge over time and also they don't move and with the k1 media because it's a moving bed filtration type of setup um, basically they'll start knocking into each other and that helps um, stop like sludge and stuff growing on it right now they're not moving because it takes a few um, days to a couple weeks for it to get heavy enough when it gets full of algae that they'll start sinking and then basically they should start doing what this cheddar ball does is they'll start knocking into each other and floating because um, there's a pipe that goes down and back up to create like a flow but again um, we're just waiting for it to build enough bacteria that way it gets dense enough and you know unlike bio balls they never really have to be replaced then we go into our, our pump in the back uh, unfortunately I kind of hit it right there so that's why I broke some of those teeth but it's okay and just here goes our pear as you can see they're getting nice and plump I've been feeding them about four times a day you know once in the morning lunchtime a little snack before lights off and then a little bit before lights off uh, before I was having a lot of cyanide bacteria basically the red slime on the rocks and as you can see with the new filtration we're not getting any of that all the algae that used to be red here is starting to die off so as you can see it's kind of moving from the front to the back so that's kind of stoked about I did lose my little uh, green star polyps it's just when I added the sump it got really cloudy for like two three days so it just must have died either that or it's just sucking all the bad stuff out of the water and just has nothing to feed on and pretty much you know that's really it for the sump part um, the rest of the video we're gonna talk about nutrition and the foods that I'm feeding um, I get a lot of questions about that as far as what I'm feeding how much I'm feeding, how many times a day, what foods do I like, what foods do I think produce the best quality eggs. And again, as you can see, everybody's happy, nice, super clear water, and pretty much just a waiting game for these guys. Uh, we're waiting for them just to basically one day just start pick back up and breed. Um, they were a breeding pair in my brother's tank, but again, he caught a leak so it's just taking them a little bit to adjust to being by themselves in a smaller environment. 
but you know they're always playing with each other and uh, twitching having a little seizure so hopefully soon and another question I get is about the way that I set this up so the way that I did this without drilling or doing anything is as you can see I've got a pipe with a pump overflowing into the back and then I've got a return pipe the return pipe is right there it's just high enough so if the water um, can't siphon back if it gets too low on water uh, we kept our original uh, little in tank media but we had to get rid of one to make room for the return and then this has a pump so I still kept the main stock pump connected to the UV light and then this pump just pumps down again um, if the power does go out I have a way of it like not um, siphoning back down because of the heights that I put it at and you know that's pretty much it so let's talk about nutrition and then we can pretty much end the video for this little update and continue once they start breeding and hopefully start laying eggs soon so back to our nutrition on what we do and what we feed here um, TDO is our pellet food I think this is the best pellet food when it comes to feeding um, one they have great color enhancing your oranges on your clowns would be super bright red and they're very like attractive to um, buyers and stuff like that because again you're not getting that pale kind of orange that you usually see in clowns you're getting like a nice nice almost like blood red almost like the a little bit darker than the word boost like in between boost and chroma is like that kind of red you're getting in the clowns this is made by reef nutrition but um, you can order it on the reeds website I think on reeds it's about eight bucks and it's a lot better than buying retail where retail I think they're trying to charge you like 20 25 dollars for this um, I feed this twice a day also you'll notice that it comes in smaller sizes um, TDO A B C and D that's what I start feeding the fry when they're born the small is good enough for our parents because they're not big pellets but again I would recommend this as far as pellet food the next thing is our fertility frenzy again I feel like LRS team seems to be the best uh, frozen food on the market um, every pack has a specific lot number you can trace it back to the day it was packed um, whatever ingredients was used for this you can um, get every single lot of where they came from when they were picked um, it's f like frozen and sent to you right away if you order it through other retailers or you can always find it inside of um, the frozen section of your local fish store um, again this is it says ideal for breeding clownfish and I would definitely definitely confirm that when I started feeding this stuff my clutch sizes would get double in size so I think this stuff is very important as far as frozen food you should always mix this in with other different types of food but I feel like this should be your main main ingredient for almost anything um, we've got mysis shrimp I buy piscine I buy a hikari um, really mysis is mysis you can't really mess that up I do like this mega marine angel only because it's more meatier for you know the angelfish which is also good for the clowns I think there's like clams there's also little worms that come out in there so that's why I kind of alternate with these I usually make like what's called like a soup and basically I kind of melt cubes of each thing um, I also buy like brine shrimp cubes I buy this I buy herbivore um, and the fertility frenzy so basically I'll cut them up put them in like a little bowl and just kind of put them in little ziploc bags and freeze them back so they look like flat packs almost like this and then um, I'll just kind of break off chunks little by little as I use it so it's like basically a variety of everything um, we also do the live brine here 
when I first started breeding, I tried the live brine for the fry, but it wasn't doing that well until I found TDOA. So I still use the live brine eggs for the um, adult clowns. You know, again, brine shrimp really has no nutrition value except as soon as they're born. So I'll put like a little scoop, you know, maybe like every three days or so, like let it, um, you know, decapsulate and then I'll feed them the live brine. Again, I don't try to put too much, but it's just good to have live food. And pretty much, you know, that's really it for our food. Again, what's important is feeding him variety of food consistently, lots, you know, you don't have to feed a lot, crazy amount every day, because you don't want the food to just kind of lay there on the floor. But again, variety, several times a day mix it up put pellets or you can do what i do melt everything together in a little bowl put them in ziploc bags lay them flat in the freezer and then make kind of like one of these flat packs and just break it off every day put in like a little shot glass or a little cup and just use it every day and that will produce um, great eggs nice bright orange eggs and again, my clutches will say I was getting 200, 250 eggs before like Fertility Frenzy. Now it's getting like almost like 500, 600 eggs, which is what you would want in any type of setting with breeding. You know, the more healthier eggs that you produce, potentially the more uh, healthy clowns that you get. And you know, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. If there's any other topics that you guys want me to talk about or um, have questions on that I haven't, you know, talked about yet, um, basically we're still waiting for the clowns to start laying eggs so I can kind of start the series on eggs and, you know, rotter furs and everything like that. Um, so until then, we're just touching up on little things that I get questions on. So again, in the comments below or on Facebook, Instagram, you know, send me a message of maybe as a topic that I haven't touched on or you have more information or excuse me, need more information on that I will gladly help you with. Again, um, any comment that I get, I usually try to reply within the same day or a couple days when I see it. And I try to reply to everybody. So don't be afraid to ask anything. But again, you know, always like this video, comment down below, um, put our notification bell so you know when we're getting a new video. And, you know, again, don't be afraid to ask anything. So that's going to conclude it for this video, breeders. Until next time, as always, happy breeding.